Hello and welcome to our third day of our Tennessee Achieves 100,000 student, student Enrolled Celebration. Uh, today's topic is my favorite for the whole week. It is a discussion with three of our Tennessee Achieves mentors. You know, a lot of attention is, is given to Tennessee Promise and to Tennessee Achieves about the free college component. Uh, but we, everywhere we go, talk about how the mentors are the heart and soul of the work that we do. We need 9,000 every single year. And today we've got a panel with, um, I, I haven't gone and added up all the years. Maybe I'll do that and come back at the end and, and update everyone. But we've got to have over 20 years of Tennessee Achieves mentoring experience on our panel here with us today. Um, and really excited to get their perspectives and, and to hear what they have to say. Some people that have been friends of our program for a long, long time. Uh, one real quick housekeeping measure. So all of our attendees today, you will notice you are muted and that your cameras are turned off, but you can interact with us. At the bottom of the screen, you have two options um, of which to do so. One is a chat box where you will be able to chat with the panelists and amongst yourselves as attendees, as the audience. And then there's a Q&A box. Please ask your questions there. Tyler is going to moderate us today. He's got some questions he's going to ask everyone. Um, I'm going to collect all of your questions and I'll come back at the end and ask those to our panelists. So you do have an opportunity um, to interact with our panelists today, but I'm going to introduce our moderator for the day, Tyler Ford. Uh, for the last 12 years, um, running the mentor program has been my responsibility. And this year I have passed that responsibility off to Tyler. He's been with us for over two years now um, and is everything we uh, could ever hope for in a Tennessee Achieves team member. Um, he's enthusiastic. He does a great job. He serves our mentors well who are serving our students. And so turn it over to Tyler to moderate our panel today. Well, thank you, Graham, for the too kind introduction. And thanks to all those for joining us today. Um, really think I'm lucky to be hosting the mentoring panel. Like Graham said, we always talk about mentoring is the heart of our program. So I'm so lucky today to join this panel, be joined on this panel by three mentors who, who have almost 20 years of experience amongst them. I uh, want to introduce our panelists to you really briefly here. We have Ms. Janice Goldthwaite, who is a five-year mentor, um, has worked with Hilton out there in Memphis, Tennessee, and really been one of our great resources in terms of sharing mentoring, supporting students, and uh, making sure students have the resources they need. So grateful to be joined by Janice. We also have Dr. John Cagle in Jefferson County, been a mentor for nine years. It is uh, very challenging to have more than nine years of mentoring experience. Been with us for about as long as you can be. So grateful to have Mr. Cagle here. Um, he's currently an administrator with Jefferson County Schools. And we'll talk to him a little bit about that. And then we have uh, Mr. Dan Caldwell as well, who's a five-year mentor from Rutherford County. Um, currently works with the United Way of Rutherford County, but has experience as well working with Nissan there in Rutherford County, um, specifically with the TCATs to make sure that the education opportunities are aligned and students have um, the credentials and resources they need to really be successful. So we're lucky today to be joined by a lot of mentoring expertise, but also a diverse uh, group of professional experiences and backgrounds that we can kind of dive into. So thank you all for joining us. Thank you for having us. Glad to be here. Well, I guess my first question is, you know, we talked about your many years of mentoring experience. For all of you, what led you to serve as a mentor? What first brought you to Tennessee Achieves? We'll kick it off. Uh, Janet, do you want to take this one first? Sure. I started mentoring with the class of 2016 because that included my oldest daughter. Um, but as far as, you know, kind of getting into this role, two things really stand out for me. Number one, I was already a band parent. So I had long been a supporter of our schools and our students. Um, so really being a mentor seemed like a, a natural next step for, for me to continue my support. But then also, secondly, I was a non-traditional college student. So I got to see firsthand some of the roadblocks that students could face with the college enrollment process. Now, because I was older, maybe a little more experienced, that helped me to navigate those roadblocks but I could see the frustration with the younger students. So I really empathize with what they were experiencing. Uh, either uh, Dan or John, if you'd like to go next. Yeah, I'll, I'll jump in there, I guess. So just like Janice said, I was a band parent, but my son was also in the Scouts. And so that my two children had already graduated high school when I started mentoring 
But I remember that uh, when my younger uh, child, my daughter, graduated high school, I was used to volunteering like with band and such. And I thought, well, you know, what's next? And so simply the reason that I signed up to serve is to help students succeed. I guess the reason I joined was kind of a personal one. I, I was a first generation college student. I was the first one in my family on either side to go to college. And and I remembered how stressful it was. I, I, you know, I remember how torturous the FAFSA seemed, and, and all the little ins and outs. And and uh, in our county, we're still pretty rural, and we have a lot of kids who are still first-generation college students. And so I just wanted to leverage my relationships with them as a school administrator into somebody who could be there for them, help navigate those obstacles, and and, and try to be there for them. And, and it would have been great for me uh, a program like this and it would have been you know would have helped my parents maybe go to college or technical school so uh, it's very personal for me the motivation. Dr. Cagle your answer uh, is really an excellent segue into my next question because you talked about you know the confusion with the FAFSA the confusion with just the process in general and ultimately that's what the mentoring role is it's someone there to just kind of help with things that could be a little confusing, particularly for a student who's the first in their family to go to college. Um, every year we ask mentors to serve three basic roles for their students. It's a taskmaster, it's an encourager, and it's a resource. But I'm curious uh, for all of you as individuals with experience mentoring, what do those roles look like in practice and why do they matter for a student? Um, Dan, if you'd like to take this one first. Okay, yeah, so first of all, for taskmaster, I think, Probably at the season where we are in our lives as mentors, we realize that teenagers don't always have the same sense of urgency that adults have. And, and that may be okay. I've heard that may be a coping mechanism to help teenagers deal with stress. But kind of the way that we can help as mentors is keep in touch. And what I found that works well is text messaging. Um, you guys say it when you have the training and I've experienced it. You don't always get a reply to your text but that doesn't mean the text wasn't written. So, um, you know, Taskmaster, that's, that's one thing that we can do. Uh, you had mentioned resource and encourager. For a resource, I think it's just really important to have an additional adult that a student can ask that may be less intimidating than going to um, a high school counselor or a college representative, you know, where the student may think, this is a silly question, you know, they're they're not going to want to answer it. And then simply for an encourager. And I think this period of, of time that we're living in, we're all seeing that none of us were made to live in isolation. And encouragement is so vital to student success. And I think we as mentors need to be intentional to not only answer the student's questions, but take a, a moment just to encourage them that, you know, don't simply give them the answer, but give them encouragement along the way. I'll, I'll bounce off of that. That's, that's what I've seen in my role, that the encouragement is maybe the most critical piece that, hey, you're going to get through this. We'll get through it together. You know, there's, there's nothing going to come up. If we, if we don't know the answer, we'll call the, the school that they're interested in. We'll get in touch with our guidance counselor to see, you know, what we can do on campus for them. Uh, I, I've had kids come into my office and we filled out their FAFSA within five minutes in my office. They, they don't, they don't have computer access, some of them. So uh, uh, just to be another positive source in their life that they're going to be okay. I mean, I, I even send my kids, you know, birthday cards just, just to keep that relationship going. And the funny thing about it is, my, at, my, at least in my time, most of my students have never needed me. They, they, it's not a labor intensive thing and that I'm always working every day with five students, but they, they all know that I'm there for them, whatever they need. So uh, I think the encouragement part may be the strongest part of it. I would have to agree. Just to add to those comments, I kind of sum it up as being a personal advocate for success. Um, that's kind of how I view my role as a mentor. As mentioned already, I want to at least make my students aware and remind them that I'm here, I'm available. If they have a question, I will get them an answer. If they hit a roadblock, I will assist them. So to be a mentor in practice, you know, does cover a range of activities. You know, it could be helping with that FAFSA form, or it could actually be uh, helping to educate even the, the parents who are not familiar with the process or who may be a little reluctant 
to provide some, some critical information that's needed to complete the FAFSA form. But again, I just want my students to know that I am their personal advocate and they don't have to face these hurdles with higher education alone. Uh, excellent answer. And I think all three of you touched on um, a theme that we've kind of heard some uh, from some other mentors who have joined us for some of these panels that, you know, a student may not always, you know, need you or they may not always be highly dependent on their mentor, but the role is about making sure every student knows that someone out there is willing to help them being that personal advocate that person they can reach out to. That's why it's so important. And I think it's such an important point to touch on. Um, Dr. Cagle, you have experience, obviously, working in schools directly, um, serving as an administrator, and I'm curious, how do you see mentoring not only personally impacting students, but really why is an outside local support system important for students in general, um, in ensuring they're successful in graduating and going on to post-secondary success? I think the mentor is so important for students because it, it does create that support system. It creates a network. Uh, a lot of young people don't understand the concept of networking, uh, and they, they see it sometimes as taking advantage of people. But none of us get through life without help. Uh, I, you know, I wake up asking for help. I go to bed asking for help, it seems like. And, and I have multiple college degrees and a great support system, but the students are kind of afraid of that. They're afraid to ask for help. So just having an outside support system that can be there for them shows that it's okay. Okay, you know, we, we're going to be there for you. If you don't need us, great. If, if you just need uh, to text us and, and, or us have you be reminded of a deadline, it's all right. And also, we're setting that example for them that someday they're going to have a chance to reach back and give somebody a hand up. And, and I, I think that's an important piece of it. Absolutely. And uh, I'll ask Dan now. Um, you have a lot of experience, obviously, working with workforce development initiatives in uh, Rutherford County, and I know you've supported Tennessee Achieves job shadowing efforts in the past. And could you speak a little bit about why um, mentoring, but also just the Tennessee Achieves program in general, it's important that students not only get academic growth and academic perspective, but also career perspective. Why is it so important that students are, are gaining all of this? Yeah, sure. Well, just to kind of put my answer in context, uh, Tyler, you alluded to earlier in the introduction that I am formerly with Nissan, retired early uh, from Nissan just this year, and I was in charge of training and Nissan's, I was also at least Nissan's liaison to the education sector. So kind of frame that up, working in workforce development, you think about manufacturing needs, industry needs, industry sector needs, the student needs to approach their education with the end in mind. So yeah, Tyler, we, we did work together. We hosted some job shadowing events there for, for several students. And it's very important for a mentor, if you can, to help students see what careers are out there and then kind of re reverse engineer their education so that they, they do have that, um, that end in mind. And you know what I've seen is when a student has a very clear vision of the role that they want to fill, uh, of their future career, they take ownership of their education and um, they, they work toward that, that career goal and because it, it becomes real. They can really see tangibly what they're learning is going to benefit them uh, in their future career. It's so important. And those job center days are, are personally some of my favorite things we do at Tennessee Achieves because these students are gaining firsthand perspective as to careers that are out there that otherwise they may just never know exist. So it's one of my favorite things we do. Um, as a follow-up to that, how is a mentor can mentors support their students in exploring the career opportunities? Mm -hmm. Dan, you're welcome to take this one, but if Janice or John, you have perspective on this, please. Yeah, try. I would like to add to that, you know, it's as a mentor and at least with the company that I work at, I, I do have contacts in various different departments, different fields. So it's been very helpful to help connect students with these different departments. So for example, we had one young student who was pursuing legal, got her in contact with our legal department. She had a chance to chat with those folks and even get uh, connected with a local association here in Memphis as a student member. Um, but the, the beauty of that is that if a student is even unsure about what a job really entails, when they're able to talk to someone doing it, 
they can gain some clarity on the front end as to whether or not that they would really want to pursue that field. And we have had some students who have made quick shifts <laughs> because they, they thought one job was gonna be one way. They talked to someone who's doing it and they learned, well, you know what, this may not be for me. But that's the beauty of the job shadowing and being able to connect your students with others that you know in various fields. <clears throat> Absolutely. I mean, we've had students before, um, you know, who go into a job shadowing opportunity thinking they're dead set on one job only to realize that maybe that's not quite the fit they thought it was. So it goes both ways. Um, John, do you have anything to add to that? No, I, I, I agree a thousand percent with Janice. It's just making those connections. I mean, yeah. if, if I had wanted to job shadow a lawyer in high school, I didn't know a lawyer. I mean, what, what high school figure knows a lawyer or, or a welder or uh, a veterinarian, you know, so we can make those connections for them and, and make that introductory phone call and really, again, providing that network for the student that they can start building out. And, uh, and, and like you said, Tyler, if, you know, I'll, it might, they might spend one day with a lawyer and decide, I don't want to be a lawyer. Look how much money and time and aggravation they just save themselves. So that's, to me, the beauty of job shadowing is maybe not even finding a career but finding the ones you don't want and, and put X in those out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tyler, I have, have one thing to add to that too. Yep. And I think it's very important for mentors to be available to the students and always be open to have career conversations. So to tell you a little quick story, it was very rewarding kind of from the mentor side of the equation. In my work in Rutherford County with workforce development, there's a professor at MTSU that invites me to speak to his class every now and then. So I went over to speak to a, a group of juniors. And so one, one bright fellow came up afterwards and said, hey, if you don't mind, could we get together for coffee and, and chat? So we followed up on that. He followed up. He brought this spiral notebook. He had a list of questions that he was asking adults. But what was really cool, when we got into that conversation, he was not only an MTSU student, but he was a Tennessee Promise graduate from Volunteer State who had matriculated over to MTSU. And this guy was so entrepreneurially minded. It was just amazing. And he had so many different ideas. And so he had this notebook of, of all the business professionals that he was meeting with. And so actually we met in the fall of last year and in the spring. And so he graduated, graduated with his bachelor's degree in May. So I consider that to be a real Tennessee promise or Tennessee achieve success story, uh, as well as a great opportunity. It did, it did me a lot of good to talk with him. It, he, he encouraged yeah. me. Yeah. I love that story. And, uh, you know, that's the cool thing about mentoring, job shadow connections, all these types of things, right? They, um, they bring students and, and professionals together and you can build those lifelong partnerships. They're really um, uh, beneficial for, for both parties. So that's, I love that story. Um, Janice, uh, from your perspective, working at Hilton um, and Hilton's been a longtime supporter of Tennessee Achieves mentoring. We've got a lot of mentors there at Hilton. Do you find that it's easier or more rewarding when you do it alongside colleagues, um, when you mentor alongside colleagues and you have more um, kind of collective work in that sense? Well, I, I, it is certainly fun when you can mentor with people that you know, you know, friends and coworkers, but it's not necessary. So I do want that point to be very clear. It's <laughs> not necessary. I think we're, we're all familiar with the expression, it takes a village to raise a child, mm -hmm. right? And so that's very true when it comes to mentoring. Um, as I kind of mentioned before, being able to connect with other coworkers or friends who may have a background in a particular field affords me the opportunity to help get my students um, better exposure. So for example, I had another mentor reach out to me. Um, her student had some questions about a particular career that was something that I had experienced in. So we connected and I was able to take that particular student out uh, on a job shadowing experience for the day. We toured some hotels and it was, it was really great. Um, so she was able to get a lot of questions answered, meet some more people kind of in that, in that industry. So that was only possible because two mentors at least, you know, were able to connect with each other. So um, there's certainly value when you can have a network of others that you know who are mentoring, but again, it's not required. No, it, it, 
Um, you know, mentors serving individually or, you know, collectively in a workplace, um, you know, the, the important thing is the student impact and the, the impact is there for the student, but I'm glad that we were able to get that perspective. Um, I want to remind everyone too that if you have questions or you comments throughout today's presentation, we're going to have a little bit of time here at the end of our uh, webinar, our panel, excuse me, to ask those questions of our panelists. My colleague Graham is in the question box moderating that, so add your questions in and we will um, get to those here at the end. But I do have a couple more questions um, for our panel before we get to that point, one of which being, um, and you, you kind of touched on this, but Mentoring obviously is so important for the students. That's why the volunteer role exists. But what sort of like personal satisfaction and personal growth do you find that you gained in serving as a mentor over the years? I, it, it, I say this looking at the, my computer screen, this gray beard, but it keeps me young. I mean, it, it, working with kids is, is enjoyable. Um, they're, they're always pushing me to be better for them. And so it's also, you know, going back to the networking point, it, it's forced me to keep my relationships fresh with people, you know, whether it's uh, uh, with, a, with a factory here in my county or a professional, uh, instead of just having it as a number in the Rolodex, I, I, I stay active with my network. And, and so I, I get a, a, you know, it's almost like I get a personal and a professional fulfillment from it. Is that illegal? Double dipping? I don't know. So. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> I, I can piggyback on that, uh, Tyler. You know, I L O V E. I love young people. I really do. And um, I also understand the importance of having a good education. And so, you know, young people oftentimes need a little extra support connecting the dots to that higher education. So for me to have a small part in that is, is a delight and a thrill. And there's nothing more satisfying than to receive an invitation to watch someone graduate. Mm -hmm. And I've had the privilege of, of being there front and center, probably screaming louder than parents at graduation ceremonies in the past. So that, that's the, the huge reward right there. Yeah, and I, I'll round it out here. So I'd mentioned my conversation with Ben from MTSU who had, had gone to Volunteer State and just, I just enjoy the conversation, but I've always thought that regardless of your age or stage in life, you can always extend a hand backwards on the path to someone who's coming along behind you. And mentoring, I think from the, the adult perspective, mentor perspective, it's just good for the soul to help other people. And I think one thing it does, it, it kind of keeps you from being self-focused all the time. So I think there's a lot of benefits from helping others. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, all three of these answers are outstanding. Janice, I love your graduation story. <laughs> that's, that's the peak of mentoring. When you get to see beginning to end all the way through graduation, that's a wonderful um, story. Right now, our team is obviously hard at work, as all three of you know, to make sure not only do 2020 students have the support they need, but 2021 students as well, making sure we have more than 9,000 volunteer mentors to support the next class of students. As we go out into communities and as we share the mentor need with individuals across the state, I guess what's one piece of advice you would give to someone who's on the fence about whether or not this role is for them, whether or not mentoring is something they can really fit into their schedule? I would tell them two things. Number one, it's it's not labor intensive. It is not labor intensive. It's not going to be a huge time commitment. But more importantly, now more than ever, doing something positive is necessary. Uh, whether it's the social unrest, COVID, politics, there seems, seems to be so much negative. And Dr. Martin Luther King told us that only lightness can drive out dark. So maybe by being a Tennessee Achieves mentor, you can light a match. And when you do that, it lights up your room and the people who are with you in that room. So if you're ever on the fence about it and ever thought about doing it, now's the year to do it. Now's the year to do it and, and be that light to help drive out the darkness. I'd like to say too, don't be afraid. Um, I have never had a job ever 
that provided so much support as being a mentor with this program. I mean, you are even given a script, a sample of what to say, what to email, what to text your students. You are absolutely not left um, alone in the process. So even if you feel that you are not um, experienced enough or you've not dealt with the student population before, that's okay because Tennessee Achieves has done a tremendous job of providing great training, great resources um, for the mentors. And, and lastly, you can't beat the free mentor breakfast if you get a chance to go. <laughs> it's worth it. <laughs> we always try to work in free food, whether it's students or some free food component makes a difference. <laughs> Absolutely. I would say that uh, for someone considering being a mentor, don't worry about feeling like you have to have all of the answers because you do not. The Tennessee Achieve staff is um, standing right there with you. And Tyler, I don't know if you remember, about a month ago, I had one of my students and I emailed you about him. We got it corrected really quickly. Yeah. He was a, a freshman last year. It was his first year. And in March, uh, he, he was living with his parents. His parents worked in industries where they were furloughed. So being a good family member, he was working part-time. He had to increase his hours and it resulted in, I think he had to drop a couple of classes. Don't remember all the details, but there was some sort of question about his eligibility for the fall. And so I read his email, there's his text that is, and it's like, whoa, this clearly exceeds my capacity as a mentor. I need to get someone involved, but reached out to Tyler and maybe to Graham as well. And um, you guys, we, we got the student linked up with the proper person over at Motlow and got that corrected. So um, if we can navigate that, if someone's watching today and you're on the fence, if we can navigate that situation, you can do it. Come on, sign up, be a mentor. <laughs> it's true. I mean, you know, we don't expect um, mentors to have all the answers to every possible, you know, college situation. Our team's always happy to jump in and help when we can because, uh, you know, uh, it's a, it takes a village, um, as I think someone said. Uh, final question before I get to the question that we've asked kind of all of our panelists here this week. Uh, like I said at the start, Mike Graham touched on, this group has almost 20 years of mentoring experience. That is a lot of mentoring experience. What keeps you coming back year after year? What leads you to, to reapply and continuing serving, continue serving students each and every year? When, when we met as a panel, I believe someone used the word reset. And, uh, and that's true. Uh, each year, there's a new group of students and their families who are going to have questions and concerns about higher education. So why stop? I want to be available to help that new group of students and families to get to the next level as quickly and as smoothly as possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and along those lines, you think about other community projects, uh, like a community beautification project or some sort of a building project where you have a definite start and an end point. Um, it, it, it's new every year. You've got a, a new group of students. Education never stops. It's, it's got to keep rolling. I, I go back because years ago, my family and I could have used a mentor. Um, mm -hmm we could have used it. My mother could have used it when she came out of high school. So like I said earlier, it's extremely personal to me. And if I can fill that void for one kid, for one family, uh, even if I never know it, I, I, I feel like I'm reaching back. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for, for sharing that perspective. Um, one final question that, that I have before we move into our um, uh, questions that we're asking all panelists is, is there a favorite mentor moment or a favorite student moment that stands out from your experience as a mentor? Um, something that, that really resonates with you? I'll, I'll start off with that. Yes, uh, I had a student coming from a seemingly disadvantaged family situation, you know, a broken home situation. Obviously, she was the first person attempting to um, pursue higher education. One of the things that I enjoyed working with her uh, on was um, just kind of helping her to learn the, the process of how to even better communicate. We were sitting at the financial aid office of, of her school and uh, she was a bit frustrated 
and had kind of raised her voice. So I kind of pulled out the remote and muted her and <laughs> paused for a moment, kind of whispered in her ear a couple of things. And then we did a retake. I mean, we restarted the conversation with the um, financial aid coordinator from the very top, from the beginning. And after we got done, she got her help. She, she thanked me actually for um, helping her to, to see a better way even of how to communicate that you, know, you, you don't always have to um, um, lose control, if you will, of your emotions, even though you're frustrated, you know, but there's a better way to kind of handle that situation. So just, you know, life lessons. So that was a real <laughs> delight. And she was one that went on to graduate uh, from uh, TCAP and then go back to pursue um, a bachelor's degree. So I'm very proud of her, not only academically, but just the growth that she did as an individual, you know, personally. I'll go back to an emotional time with a with a mother. It was after, I guess, the spring meeting or, or the, the meeting we had right before FAFSA deadline. And the mother motioned me to the side. She said, Mr. Cagle, we don't have a computer. I don't know anything how to do this FAFSA. I, I, and she was in tears. And, and I said, do you have a copy of your tax return from last year? She did. I said, send it with your daughter tomorrow. We'll get it done. And you would have thought I'd given her a million dollars. She just, she just beamed and said, oh, thank you. You don't know what this means. And, you know, something that literally took me five minutes. Uh, mm -hmm. But, but it, you know, that's the type of need that's out there. We, we forget it because we're used to throwing those terms around, but it, it meant that much to her and, and it was easily done. So uh, th that's one that sticks out for me. Yeah, I mentioned a couple of students I worked with. I guess another one that sticks out was in my first year to be a mentor, and this is maybe a little more operationally focused uh, or tactical, but he wanted, he was really bright, wanted to work with his hands, wanted to study small engine repair. And our local TCAT here in Rutherford County did not have a, a small engine repair uh, program. So we searched, he did, his parents and I, and we searched and we found one in Chattanooga. And he was kind of at a stage of maturity. He was ready to get out on his own, kind of leave home, but kind of, you know, like going off, going away to college, so to speak. And so just to be able to walk alongside he and his family as they kind of navigated that and, and we found the program and got him into that program. That was kind of reassuring. It's my first year. It's kind of like, hey, I can do this. I can figure this out. So, so that was one that stands out. Yeah, of course it does. And I think the cool thing about all three of these moments that you've highlighted is it probably took all of you about five to 10 minutes in total. Uh, it's not a huge time lift, right? But for the students, there's a there's a measurable impact there. So I appreciate you sharing those stories. Um, so I want to remind all of our attendees that if you have questions, we're, we've got two more questions here, and then we're going to bring Graham back in and, and ask some questions from the audience. So please add those questions in here. But before we do that, I do have two more questions. Um, these are kind of our fun questions we're asking all of our panelists. Um, first question being, what is a lesson that you learned in your first job? And we're talking very first job. Um, what's a lesson you've learned that stuck with you through the years? I'll jump out there. So yeah. what I would say is find the seasoned employees in the company who are doing it right. So those people that have a positive attitude, you know that they're respected by their peers, and just learn as much as you can from them. And don't be afraid to ask questions because if you find the right people who are doing it right and have the right attitude, they're gonna to wanna to help. I'll play off that one. Be, be aware of how much you don't know. Uh, uh, you wanna come in as the, the new guy and you wanna show how bright and intelligent you are. You don't know a whole lot. And just be aware of that. Show initiative, be, be willing to work, but don't be afraid to ask questions and find out. And for me, my first job as a teenager was actually working in the mayor's office. I live in a very small town in, in Missouri City, but um, nothing beats having a warm smile. That is the, the beginning of being a professional person um, and, and um, making a good impression. So certainly just be willing to smile. It goes such a long way. Certainly all three lessons. And our final question for you here today is, uh, what's the best piece of advice you can give our next 100,000 Tennessee Achieve students? Be persistent. Don't give up. 
And I know when you're 18, 20 years old, two years seems like forever. But I think when you get to the stage we are, two years is just, it, it, it's a vapor. It evaporates, you know. <laughs> you can do this. Be persistent. It'll lock unlimited for potential in the workplace. I think of that line from that classic movie, uh, How I Did Win an Oscar, I'll Never Know, with the water boy. You can do it. You can do it. <laughs> you, know, you really can. You really can. I'll add to that. Um, your mentor is very affordable, free. <laughs> so work them. Free is good. <laughs> free is very good. You can afford to have a mentor, put them to work because we want to work for you. Personal advocate. That's a great point. In, in our society now, there are coaches and mentors that you can hire. And you can pay a lot of money for this, and it, this is free. So that's that's a great thought. Well, that's certainly our first Waterboy reference during the hundred thousand <laughs> student celebration. But it's it's well earned. Uh, well, thank you all for answering those questions, and happy to have Graham back with us now to bring in some audience questions that we can uh, we can answer. Yeah, I certainly want to mention that we've had a lot of positive feedback in the comments. A lot of people thanking you all for serving students. Uh, we got a woo, Dr. Cagle. I think it may have come from your daughter, so it may have been a plant <laughs> in the audience there. But um, we had a question from Kathleen who asked, um, and, and you've all kind of touched on this, but maybe you can talk a, a little more in depth about some additional resources. But what resources does Tennessee Achieve provide for you to be a successful mentor? I can tell you right now that handbook that we get as mentors is very thorough. And of course, the information is available online, but I tend to take my handbook, you know, when I was going to go meet with a student and it's, it's very helpful. But even beyond that, uh, the texting, you know, our, our contact, at least for West Tennessee um, and the Memphis side, to be able to send a text or an email and get a reply back very quickly is the greatest resource. The handbook is wonderful, especially the part that's always covered, it seems like I believe in the first meeting, on time management. That, that's, that's one of the greatest lessons you can learn because you're, you're going to be completely in charge of your time, and that sounds wonderful, until you realize you've got to budget it just like dollars and cents. Yeah, and I'll go back to the resource of just the Tennessee Chief staff. So I mentioned reaching out to Tyler. I've reached out to Graham before and some of the other staff. And um, if, if I get an answer in 24 hours, it's late. I mean, these guys, these gals, they are on top of it. So they will get back with you fast. And one of my favorite things about our panel today is uh, Janice is coming to us from Shelby County, a, a mostly urban suburban county. Um, Dan from Rutherford County, a very suburban county. And then John from a more rural county in Jefferson County. Um, Diane asked a question specifically about internet issues in rural Tennessee as uh, colleges are moving online, as our mentoring program is moving online. I'm, I'm going to expand this question a, a little bit more. Um, what are some of the unique challenges you see students that you're working with facing in your community? You know, I think oftentimes um, there is this perception that there's this huge discrepancy between the challenges that are maybe our inner city students are facing versus our rural students versus our suburban students. And what we've seen over the last 12 years is that while they're, while the neighborhoods may look very different and while the, where the places they live may look very different, uh, a lot of their challenges are, are very similar. Um, so kind of I packed a lot into that question, but maybe challenges you're seeing specific to the students that you're working with. For a lot of students, it's just the biggest challenge is breaking that chain. No one in their family has gone to, gone to post-secondary. Um, it's never been talked about. It's never been discussed. And now they're on the cusp of being able to do that. So just taking that initial step, you know, believing enough in themselves and the possibilities that they can do that. So uh, that, that's something that I think affects us all across the state, really across the country, breaking that cycle of whether you call it lack of resources, lack of opportunities, poverty, just, just taking that step and believing enough that with the help of mentors and Tennessee Achieves that you can do it, just taking that first step. And I'll add to that, young people are young people regardless of where they live. So they, they all kind of lack um, 
a measure of experience and maturity. So sometimes um, I'm finding that they don't even know what kind of questions to ask. You know, they all have the same kind of questions on the, the FAFSA form or um, a, a college application. So that kind of crosses the boundaries, you know, no matter what your economic situation may be, it's because you're a young person. You know, if, if I meet you on campus and, you know, your goal is to, you know, finalize something with the financial aid office, all the young people kind of look like deer in headlights. Um, and that's just because they're young. So that's something that, you know, being a mentor, we're able to help them to, to navigate. Doesn't matter where they're coming from. They're just young people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I would add again, to, just with what Dr. Cagle said, um, I've been able to, to help and navigate the mechanics, but really it's, it's the confidence and building the confidence. And I've done a lot of work in this county with the complimentary scholarship, Tennessee Reconnect. And we see it both with adults and with, with rising high school or graduating high school seniors. It's just, you know, the, the scholarship was intended for first time college goers. So it's just overcoming this, this barrier of no one in my family's ever done this before. You know, I'm unsure if I can do it. I may have a parent who had tried college and it didn't work. And just, just walking alongside and, and building their confidence, I think is one of the biggest things. We have talked about your role as a mentor today, but I'm going to kind of flip this around a little bit on you and ask, have you ever had a mentor and what did that relationship mean to you? I certainly did and still do at work. I, I certainly um, have mentors more than one uh, that I look up to even now at work. So that they're the ones kind of give me the, the advice on maybe a next career move um, or even something um, less extravagant, just how to navigate through a situation, a problem, you know, how to tackle something. So there is so much value in just having someone else to go to, bounce an idea off to, or someone to help you get an answer. That's a mentor. And I'll go back to the comment I made earlier. None of us get through life without help. And, and when you recognize that and you know, when you start looking, you, we've all had a lot of matches lit in our life. We've all had a lot of light in our life. And we can take something away from everybody we've ever met. Even being on this panel with Dan and Janice, I mean, they, they've been great examples. Just hearing their stories, I can take things away from that. And it's going to make me a better mentor and a better person. And Graham, you alluded to having a mentor in the workplace, and yes, I have. And what's really nice is to be able to have candid conversations with that person who is not necessarily the person who you work for. So you don't have to worry about coming across that you don't have the knowledge or that you don't have the want to, or you're going to step into something that's political or you shouldn't. It's just really nice to, to just ease all those barriers have someone who may have walked those steps before you and is willing to, to just spend a little time to help you as you kind of move along the path. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I think mentoring can be, you know, formal like Tennessee Achieves where we assign you someone and a phone number and an email and you've got a, a plan laid out and a calendar or it can be a very informal thing. Oftentimes, I think I've had mentors in my life that if, if I told them they were a mentor to me, they probably wouldn't even know that I considered it to be that. Um, but it's important to have those supports throughout your college and your early career specifically. Um, we had a question about the number of students um, that people are paired with in Tennessee Achieves. And I think I mentioned in the comment that everyone gets five to 10. Uh, John, I think specifically of some of those really, really large Jefferson County High School meetings um, in the cafeteria there. I know you guys have somewhere in the neighborhood of about 450 seniors every year. Uh, they all apply. I think Jefferson County was one of the first high schools that had all their seniors applying. Um, and I remember in those early days that every time I looked at your table, it seemed like it was growing exponentially. I know you've worked with 10 students every single year. Um, Janice and Dan, I'm sure you've worked with more than five. Can you talk a little bit about the um, time commitment, the difference in working with five or 10 and and kind of what that looks like for you? Well, again, it, it's it's not, I, I think you all estimate in your booklet that it takes about an hour a month. And, and I would argue that it's not even that much because uh, the high schools across the state of Tennessee have done such an incredible job preparing their kids uh, that a lot of those questions, you can just refer them to their counselor or you can call their counselor and say, hey, you know, this kid needs this type of advice. Um, 
as as opposed to when I graduated high school, you know, the, your career advice was get a job. That was it, you know. So, uh, so it, it it varies from kid to kid, but it's it's never for me. Even with ten kids that I've mentored, never been an hour a month. It's more, as Dan said earlier, just being there, just being a resource. I would have to agree. I, when I pre COVID, when we could meet students, you know, um, at, at the uh, schools. I would make myself available to pick up uh, mentor list students. You know, maybe their mentor didn't show up. So, you know, I've acquired some more students, you know, names and contacts beyond the 10 that would be assigned to me. But even with that, you know, let's say even if I'm, if I'm kind of keeping up and texting as many as 15 students um, and then one friend refers somebody else to me, that's fine because it's never that much of a time commitment uh, and certainly not a time commitment that I'm not, um, willing to to give so yes there have been some times where i maybe was a little more hands-on and that was the need of the student but as a whole so whether it's been five ten or even 20 students it's never been too much ne never that yeah and i i agree with, with with all of that to me it's just i text the students so copy paste you know and, and text the next one i never do group text to everybody don't do that and, you know, there's probably an app that I can do to do one text and it goes to everybody without it being a group text, but, you know, just a little copy paste. It, it works. It, it's really not a huge commitment of time. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate that. Looks um, so like Dr. Cagle has let us know he's had something come up that he needs to attend to really quickly, so he may be leaving us. John, thanks so much for being here today. Thank you all, and thank you, Dan and Janice. I, I, thank you. It's been an honor. Enjoyed been this. Honor. Thanks for thank you. Us. Appreciate it. Oh. Um, Dan, I'm going to ask you a question specifically. Well, actually, Janice, both of you have, have been really great about this. Um, both of you have worked to, um, Dan, when you were at Nissan, Janice at Hilton, um, have worked to engage other um, team members at, at both of um, those employers. Why is it important, you know, at Nissan and at Hilton that your um, that their employees are engaged in the community? I mean, obviously, we're going to ask specifically as mentors, but why, why do your companies have that culture of giving back and why is that important? I think for us, obviously Hilton, we're in the hospitality industry, right? So that is evolved based around, built around um, having some care and concern, right? For someone else. I mean, the word hospitality really means love or fondness for a stranger. And that ties in very well with the mentoring program. These students are strangers to us before we really get to know them, but we are prepared and willing to, to share kindness and some support. So as an industry, as a company, that's just what we're built on, hospitality doing for others. So that again, this program is a natural fit. And because it's not a huge time commitment, um, many team members have been able to make the time and then for those who didn't think they could, once we hosted the job shadowing events on, on our campus, um, other team members got to meet some of these students, maybe hear some of their stories. It touched the heart. We got them. <laughs> <laughs> so they were able to, to make an adjustment and it's been great. Mm -hmm. great. Yeah, from, uh, from the Nissan perspective, automotive manufacturing, so obviously, Labor intensive, takes a lot of staff members, a lot of really, really good, knowledgeable, dedicated team members. Everyone there is working toward one common goal, regardless of what you do, and that's to roll off the line, uh, very safe, high quality vehicles for our customers. So everybody's working with that goal. And so it's just important that we all focus on uh, filling that pipeline. And uh, I've seen a comment rolling in. It looks like Wayne Ellington from Nissan. I know that they get smiles out of Tyler and Graham. You guys know Wayne. He's been a, a Tennessee Promise mentor probably from year one. And it's just, just Wayne and other folks like him at Nissan and other companies who are helping their companies just develop that pipeline. It's just so critical. Yeah, Wayne is one of the best. Um, thanks to Wayne, our entire team has toured that Nissan facility in Smyrna. And it's a really, really um, impressive Thing to go and see if you ever get that opportunity to tour that facility. Uh, we have a question from Christine who's asked, what is something that you wish you had known in college um, that maybe you didn't know at the time, but you know now that you could impart on students? Mm. 
I'll jump in there. I think Dr. Cagle mentioned it before he left is that maybe the one thing that I, that I learned through college is there's so much more that I don't know <laughs> that I do know. So that's uh, probably, I think, I think the sooner you can come to understanding that <laughs> you're probably the better you are, better off you are. I would have to say to um, look for more financial aid opportunities. Looking back in hindsight, um, if you won a scholarship, that's great. But if you take the time and look for more, how much better that would be too. So, you know, don't spend money unnecessarily. If you can really just take a little bit of time, there is other aid out there. You probably qualify for it. Just spend a little bit of time pursuing it and then that will be worth it. Yeah, Janice, I like what you have said uh, previously about you see your role as a mentor as kind of being an advocate for students. Um, you know, I think one of the really nice benefits of Tennessee Promise that often gets overlooked is that with, with 9,000 volunteer mentors, it's 9,000 people advocating for higher education that maybe otherwise would just wouldn't have an opportunity to do so. Um, why do you think that role is so important? I think this would have been a great question for Dr. Cagle from inside the school, but um, from outside of the school perspective, like why do you think it's important that we now have these nearly 10,000 advocates across Tennessee? One of the things that we have other states and, and cities, communities come to us often, um, and usually their first question is, how do you find 10,000 people? And uh, I kind of shrug my shoulders and laugh and make a joke about being the volunteer state uh, because <laughs> it's important that we have these people now um, advocating for education all across the state. Yeah, because what, what I'm finding is that, you know, sometimes there are some, some huge gaps, you know, within the, even the family setting, and they, they don't uh, fully understand the value of being um, skilled in getting a, a good education beyond high school. I think Dr. Cable mentioned once upon a time, your counseling advice was get a job at, out of high school. And nowadays that's easier said than done. You need some skills. You know, you need some solid skills to be able to do that. So to be a personal advocate, you know, for these students, as has been mentioned, that comes with the encouragement. Yes, you can do this. You know, you may not feel that you can, or maybe you struggled so much with high school, but you, you need to, to know that you've got a different learning environment at college or a different learning environment at a vocational school. You know, and I understand that you may not like the high school setup, but as your personal advocate, I'm here to help you explore those options that you may not know about. Um, and then when you hit a roadblock, you may get um, a letter bounced back or an email from the school. It's because you missed something on the application process. You don't have to panic. Your personal advocate, your mentor, I will help you get this straightened out. Even if it means I will contact the school or the financial aid officer or the bursar's officer, whomever on your behalf, I'll be happy to send those emails. I'll be happy to make a phone call. So yeah, being that personal advocate and um, it's, it's more important more than ever because it's you need to have a skill in 2020 going forward to survive. It's just not enough to say, get a job that's incomplete. I think it's important too, to have an advocate outside of the education system because um, like a school, any kind of organization, a business, the people who work there, that's what they do day in and day out. So they know the processes, they understand the processes, and it's just human nature maybe to get frustrated if somebody gets out of the process. And sometimes it's difficult when you're in an organization to put yourself in the shoes of somebody who's encountering your organization. So I think it's really, really great, really neat that we have the mentor process and we give the student just automatically, you're, you're signed up with a mentor who's on the outside, who can walk alongside and advocate for you. Yeah, absolutely. I'm gonna ask, I think kind of one final question here. Um, so we, we've touched on the financial component and we touched on the mentoring role, um, but the third kind of component of Tennessee Achieves that's been with us forever is the community service component, obviously. As a mentor, you are giving back to your communities. We talked about why your companies find that to be important, but you've both helped us facilitate some community service opportunities in the form of job shadowing. Um, talk about why, why that's important for students to, to get that experience. And 
maybe even outside of just the job shadowing component, why it's important for students to, to be learning to give back now. And then I'm going to turn it back over to Tyler to wrap us up after that. Okay. Well, for one thing, it's fun. <laughs> I mean, uh, honestly, it's, it's fun for, for us as the host uh, team members involved, and it's fun for the students, for them to be able to come and at least visit our campus and in one day meet their community service requirement. It's a win-win. I mean, it's a win-win. And, uh, but, but more importantly, it gives our team members the opportunity to connect with, with students in the community. Um, again, as I mentioned, they're, they're learning some of the backgrounds and they're being touched by their stories. I mean, some of these kids do have some, some pretty harsh um, roadblocks that they're trying to overcome. So to be able to, again, have a small share and just to kind of listen to their stories, provide some kind of feedback or show a student, you know, um, here's what my job is like. You know, what do you think? Do you like it? It's a delight. It is the best event of our year when we can do it. So disappointed that COVID robbed us of that, you know, this, this year, but we're looking forward to, you know, being, being able to do something, you know, in the future. Yeah, from my experience with job shadowing, just everything that Janice said, it's so good. I think Janice, earlier in the conversation, you mentioned that sometimes it's just important for students to see what they don't want to do as it is to see what they do want to do. So I just echo everything you've said. And, you know, just kind of reflecting back on the community service requirement as a whole, just the overarching community service. I think it's really good that we plant the seeds of generosity and volunteering within the students at, at this age as they're entering adulthood. And, you know, right now we're kind of making them do it, but hopefully it'll catch on and they'll have a lot of fun doing it and they'll realize the importance of giving back to their communities. And uh, hopefully that's something that the program will do that have some residual effects to just improve communities as a whole. Dan, that's one of my favorite things about the community service requirement. We've got high school seniors, college students out there giving back to their communities at you know higher rates than they may be otherwise. And that's one of the great benefits of Tennessee Achieves. And uh, Janice, I would add too, we had a student in the chat comment that they love job shadowing and help. So <laughs> you helped get that set up for. So uh, thank you both for your support for job shadowing, mentoring, and, and all things Tennessee Achieves. And, and thank you for giving your time to this panel today, getting your perspective and your expertise on the role has been um, so beneficial. We really appreciate you taking the time. It's a pleasure. Thank you for the opportunity to be here. Yeah, thank you so much. It's an honor to be asked. Thank you. Thank you. Of course. Well, thank you again for joining us and thank you all for hopping on today's webinar and all of our mentors who have helped us get to this 100,000 student mark. It really would not be possible without mentors. So we appreciate your time and we hope you all have a great day. Bye, everybody. Thank, thank you. you. Bye.